Thank you for joining uh, the WiseNets, the chair segment once again. Today's guest, we have WAC100, uh, CEO of 100 Entertainment. Thanks for joining us today, WAC. Yo, before we get started, I hear this voice. So I'm doing this whole interview and I just got this mystical voice coming from somewhere. Like, I don't know if he's like behind the wall. I don't know what's going on, but this is definitely different, right? It's like the planetarium or something going on right now. It's kind of, it's, then the voice has this Art LeVoe type thing going on. Um, Trump, I'm at a podcast right now. If I don't make it out, I voted for you. Please come find me because I've never <laughs> done a podcast sit down where I can't see the person and I'm just hearing the voice. But I'm 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 gonna go along with this. It's a little spooky. You gotta trust the voice, man. Okay, there you, you go. Trust All right, I'm, I'm with you. Let's go, brother. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna actually uh, play c a clip here of um, Brick Baby responding to one of your accusations, and then you'll get to respond to it. All right, let's go. Whack trying to push this whole narrative about that specific. Do you think he's being genuine? Who? Whack. whack. You think he really believes this shit about you? Or do you think that. that nigga whack got content. It's time to make content, man. You don't know what the fuck he's talking about. That's why I said in that conversation, I don't know if you heard our whole I listened to like the first 40 minutes today. But I said, I said, what you doing is just saying a gang of shit, and I'm going along with it for content right now. Mm. You sound crazy to the motherfucker. Right. Like, I'm only entertaining this shit right now because we're in front of 35,000 people. And I have to make that clear. Like, bro, I wouldn't answer these questions a hundred times <laughs> back to back ever in my life because you're not getting nowhere. Right. Like, it's like you got good questions. But then when I come with the response for the question, no, but those are illegal in California. Like, bro, on 6 so as much as you done prayed and wished for me to go to jail, man, it would have happened already if it was going to happen. Boy, you be praying. Like, I've never seen a gangbanger wish jail on a nigga so bad. Mm. Now, in this clip, he's responding to you, um, claiming that he's working with law enforcement. Can yeah, you... yeah, he's done before in the paperwork. We think he's him. So, that was, uh, we called him on academics. Might have been academics, a clubhouse. One of the two we called him. He might have called my phone. But nevertheless... Um, everything that I talk about is, is already on the internet. So sometimes things are said and it really is not, it doesn't relate to anything. And then things pop up and we like, hold on, what did we hear that from? So this is with the, uh, the Quando situation at the Beverly Center across the street. And for the longest, right, the world thought this shooting was behind a bad marijuana deal that had something to do with some Persians, Russians, or Armenians. This is what the world thought. And we left it at that, right? So three, four months later, in February of 2023, Brick Baby goes on the thing with Flacco and says, I guess they can't say they didn't slide for King Von no more. And Flacco is oblivious to what he's talking about. What are you talking about? He like, yeah, Lil Pab. So he's the first one to tie Little Dirk's team and these shooters to this murder. He said it. We kind of still didn't pay it any attention. June 2023, he gets raided. My little homeboy is tied in with his family somehow. He calls me. They just kicked in Brick Baby's door and find the AK-47, right? So I start applying the pressure. He bails out. We like, yo, we need to see your paperwork, bro. We need to see your bail paperwork. We need to see everything on it, right? He's in contact at the time. Him and 600 are tight. He's telling 600, yo, the feds and the LAPD was there, and they asking about Big U. Big, you got a situation coming. They're going to make an arrest. Now, this is June. He said, they said they've been on me since March. So what he says, right? So we listening. We wake up at the top of August, and by God, Big, you's arrested by the feds. So now we wondering, what type of conversation was going on in there with you to where they're just this open 
to discuss other individuals with you, right? We let it go. We drive the narrative. We let it go. But for a year, I've been asking, where's your court date, right, for the AK-47? So we apply a little pressure on academic show a couple days ago when this thing pops up. And he pops up, and I ask him again, where's your court date? He says, I went to court in July, and the AK-47 was a DA reject. I said, what court? Compton Court. Now, you know we the exposers. You didn't gave me some information. Compton Court? Hmm. Who could I call to look into this? None other than Reggie Wright. Called Reggie, sent him his first and last name, date of birth. Yo, he said he got a DA reject for a June 23rd arrest for AK-47. Brick Baby voluntarily tells us, yeah, the feds in the LAPD was there. Okay, cool. Reggie Wright gets back three days ago <clears throat> on a Honey Show podcast we did and says he got the information back from the Compton courts and the DAs. On that date, the only thing Brick Baby was arrested and charged on was a drug code, no AK-47, which means the feds have decay. That's all that means. But you lied to us and told us the AK-47 was a DA reject. See, we're trying to figure out how you run around here. An AK-47 is not like getting caught with a 9 or a 40. That's a firearm that's illegal in the state. They're not DA rejecting that on somebody that's an ex-convict, like Brick, right? They're not doing that, right? So now we're wondering, okay, well, we checked into that. You lied about it. This CI number four says, I mean, this co-conspirator number four says he's a local L.A. gang member who let OTF know where Quando was staying and when he was in town. And he, that's what it says, and he was dropping the pin. Now, you press Quando on checking in, you and Big U. So we like, okay. AK, we don't know where it's at. You just admitted that the original search warrant now, out of his mouth, was for his electronic devices. They stumbled up on the AK while searching for the electronic devices. Okay? You ain't been to court on the K. The feds got the K. <clears throat> not cop the court. It's not on the state side. And you haven't been to court in 16 months. And now the paperwork is produced. And since then... We've gotten a call from a certain individual, which once he is where he needs to be, he called Loose Cannon and said, bro, when they hit the dudes in Chicago, they hit my mama's spot. Nobody knows what I did but one person, Brick Baby. They're from the same gang. So it's more to come on the exposure side. So we ain't trying to see you to jail. We just simply go on over the things you've already said. We already think he talked too much. These are things you're saying. You're saying these things. I, I'm not saying them. We're just asking. If you ask me the same question a hundred times, I should give you the same answer. Unless I told a lie. And then I start to trip up. So, you know, that's what that is. And he said it. He exposed it. Like... You should have never said, identified OTF as they put in a work. Now, there were four conspirators, right? Five. Five. But how many of the names were mentioned? They mentioned Lil Dirk as one. They mentioned conspirator number three as the manager, the guy that booked the flights and rooms or whatever. He's doing his job. Number four is the local L.A. guy. Number two is a shooter, right, that's giving up information, which they think is the jam guy. I wouldn't know. I don't even know if the jam guy was even in town or in jail. I wouldn't know. And number five, so number two and five are shooters. And number four is the local L.A. guy that gave up the, local, the location. So you think... Brick Baby was one of the five, but his name is not mentioned. We there. think he's number four. It's going to come out. See, when Quando got back to Georgia from the shooting, he got pressed prior to it about checking in. Quando claims rolling 60s. He's just not from California. So he got pressed by checking in. 
right? As soon as he got back after the Beverly Hills shooting, he dropped his flag and said, I'm no longer from the 60s anymore. Y'all ain't got my back. Now, I don't know if law enforcement told him something. I don't know if he put it together or somebody else told him something. Like, because he heard, he said, he made mention that come to find out these cars have been on me everywhere I went. They knew where I started from. So maybe he did the math for whoever he was checking in with was, you know, conspiring or backdooring him. At the end of the day, that's you. Like, Brick, you the one went on the internet talking about you got to check in. And then after that, just said, so what, little Dirk Homeboy just got killed. I don't care if Kondo from 60s. So what if I told him the location of where he was at? That just came out of his mouth. He just said that. So, you know, at the end of the day, all we're doing is asking Brick Baby why he has said certain things. That's it. We're asking you why you said something. Now, you've also had a falling out with Big U, right? Yeah, that's been like some years now, probably about... Uh, about four years now. So you're not concerned at all about uh, with regards to repercussions from the 60s? Um, right now, my concern is for the overall 60s and repercussions from Brick Baby and Big U about what they're conspiring against on the guys over there that are, that are good. They're, they're not, they're like a poisonous fruit right now. They're cancer over there. You got one dude that got police contracts you got another dude that's telling us they're gonna pick big you up in two months we don't know how you know that and then he's also telling us big you's threatening to make him say things on the internet because of a video he has him doing something right so at the end of the day these is the only two people right now at this point in time that's really giving out a black eye over there everybody else over there is doing what they're supposed to do how they're supposed to do it but i think you know people got to understand the big you that we know him to be, that ain't who that guy is anymore. You that dude got federal indictments. He, why he ain't going to court? You he think got he's two, an three cases. Too, huh? You think big you's an informant? Well, he, got, too? he got a contract with the 77 Street Crash Unit that says he got to report uh, gang locations, gang hot spots, firearms use, um, and things of that nature. You know what I mean? You know, he, you know, he, he, he um, He's doing things that we're not supposed to be doing. You can't straddle the, the, the track like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a pimp and a preacher, too. You can be a pimp that turned into a preacher, but you can't preach on Sunday. And you talking about you pimping the women on Monday. You, you, you can't do it. It just It's a contradiction of, of what you're supposed to stand for and represent. So, you know, with us knowing now what the grid program is, on and him getting paid for it and the understanding that um, in order to maintain these contracts, you have to be productive and produce, right? Uh, and he's been having it now for quite some time. We just didn't know about it. We thought development option was Pop Warner football, continuation program, graffiti removal, back to school, you know, school supply giveaways, things of that nature. He never, ever had mentioned or told me anything about this. And we ran about 17 years. You know, when I got those contracts, I didn't eat for about three, four days. It was a little nerve-wrecking. How did you have access to those contracts? Uh, it was a dude named, oh, um, uh, man, what is it? I don't know how I went. It was a, it's a blogger. Um, and because me and Big U was so tight, he accused me of being part of the program. So I find out by accident, right? Um, forget his name, it'll come to me. But he accused me, and the, on the caption, it says, you know, whacking Big U, working with the, with the police. So when I'm listening to it, he's reading the contract. He's actually reading it. So I hit another blogger, um, dude I know that Big Chuck. I said, yo, you know this dude? He like, yeah, yeah, I know him. I said, man, can he forward over the contracts he was reading? Because I'm still not believing it at the time. Because he's accusing me of being a part of it. So I know you on some BS. Dude sends it over. 
whole contract, and I'm going through it. I said, yeah, I don't know nothing about this. He said, man, y'all too tight. I see Big U's signature. I see other signatures. I'm reading it. And what shook me was the police issued device to communicate with law enforcement in the form of a BlackBerry. That shut me down. Because I, for years, had asked him, why did he have a black, why he had a blackberry? He would always say, somebody gave it to him. It was nothing, no big deal. So now as I'm reading this, it's giving a description of the device they gave them to communicate. So the dude was like, man, ain't no way you and Big U this tight. You don't know nothing. You ain't getting some of this money. I said, I tell you what, brother, I'm not from the Crenshaw district. You saying every area has this? He said, yeah. I said, well, I'm from Pacoima. He said, you know what? We're going to go pull theirs. He called me a couple days later. He says, um, <clears throat> bro, yeah, you ain't, you ain't on the Pacoima one. I said, well, I would like to know who is. And the name he told me was a guy I grew up with, right? He, I knew the guy he told me that's over the one in my area, right? Uh, but he's not a gang member. You know, everybody knows him, so I wouldn't hold it against him, not him, right? And um, he said, yeah, whack, if you was, then you would be getting the money for your area. I said, brother, let me enlighten you on something. You got to be, it says right here, you got to be a California resident. I said, I've been a resident of Oklahoma, bro, since 20, 2003. All my taxes, all my vote, everything happens for me in Oklahoma, not even in the state of California. So I found out by being accused of it because I was so close to Big U. Although my name wasn't on the contract, he thought I knew about it. So when I started questioning him about it, that's when, that's when our, our, our falling out started. It really, like, really did some damage. You know, there was other things that went on prior to, but that right there was, like, really damaging and mind-wrecking because it's like things is going on, and for you to hold that position with law enforcement is just dangerous, brother. It's, and there's no way you're not going to cross the line to maintain that contract the way it's written. Now, you grew up. In Pacoima, right? Born and raised, born, bred, and fed. So you were part of the Valley Piru. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> yeah. was 60s a rival gang or? Well, you know, they crips. So, you know, anything with a blue bandana is a rival gang. It wasn't our everyday daily rival gang. No, it wasn't. But within our neighborhood, we did have, we had spectacles. You know, my neighborhood was, we. it's an all Piru city, right? Uh, predominantly Hispanic. And back in my heyday, right, you had Pacoima, you had San Fernando. So Sanfe was a direct enemy to anything in Pacoima. So we pretty much got along with the essays, you know, in my heyday back then. You know, we shared the same projects, the Vietnam, the Van Nuys apartments with the, with the Van Nuys boys, right? Um, and then you had your local essay outside of it. You know what I mean? You had like... Uh, violent boys in Sun Valley and things like that that just didn't get along with the city. Anything that said Pacoima killer by nature, we wasn't going to get along with it. Um, but it was a lot of money coming through there. It was a lot of gorgeous women coming through there. And it was really only one black black um, gang, young street game. The OVGs, which was our fathers and older brothers and uncles, original Valley Gangsters was there. And for a short period of time, it was a, a little movement called Valley Swine that came through there. But the majority of them turned OVG anyway, which is, um, you know, they wasn't Crips or Bloods, they was hustlers. So you would look up and you would see some Benny Show lines or you'll see some Rolling Sixties, you know what I'm saying, or some East Coast or some, you know, popping up, you know, because of a chick they met or, or you know, they trying to set up shop. And then a little beef would start, but just far as just, Block to block, it's too far away. They on Crenshaw and Slauson. You know, you talking about, you know, you got to get on the 5 freeway, go to the 10, you know, get off get off on, on Crenshaw, you know, drive down about five, six miles to even get to them. But in jail or, you know, whether we went out to some top event concerts or whatever, you know, red, burgundy, and blue is always going to be that that separation. So, you know, by nature, we was enemies, but they wasn't a direct enemy to me. How old were you when you joined Pyro? 12, 1989. 12. Called my first case at 12. Wow. That's young. Yeah, but, you know, I came up in a time and era where we was game banging. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it ain't went like today, you know. Um, 
<clears throat> get a couple of tattoos on your face, walk a certain way, <clears throat> and then use drugs. You know, back then we talked about selling the dope, not using the dope. You know, it was a violation you got caught using certain drugs. You know, only thing they really accepted was like marijuana, um, PCP, believe it or not, which they call Sherm, um, things like that. You know, if they found out you was doing some crack or primos or cocaine, you know, it, it, it depend, depending on who you were, it was going to be a DP that went on. You know what I mean? A lot of my older homies fell victim to um, crack, which <clears throat> understanding that movement of that now, I don't really hold it against them as much as I used to. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, I caught my first case at 12. Um, saw with a deadly weapon, 245, nine firearm. Hit a dude like 28, 30 times in the face with a pellet gun. He called my mom out her name, and that's what it was. You know, I'm the youngest of boys, so I got a bunch of uncles and neighbors, and, <clears throat> you know, I'm watching what's going on around me, so I just responded the way I felt I was supposed to respond. I went on the run for the first time. I was on the run about three, four months, and then I had my first stint going to Silmar Juvenile Hall, 16350 Filbert Street, Silmar, California, 91342. I still remember. You remember the address. 35 years later. Wow. Yep. Let's jump to um, Diddy and his sons. Um, is it true uh, Diddy's sons tried to jump Ray J? Yeah, what, and I'm what, learning. What, what's the beef between I'm them? learning more and more about it. Um, it's like the third time they confronted him. <clears throat> and Ray J is trying to be a bigger man because he's looking at these youngsters as like kids, but they're not kids. And I can say that because he's been keeping it from us. You know, he... he the Ray J's been keeping it from you? He's been keeping it from us. Yeah, he he had, was part of Valley Pirate. No, Ray no? J from Carson. Oh, Carson. He from, yeah, he from Carson. You know what I mean? But was he part of Pyro as well? He a Pyro. Yeah. Yeah, he from Centerview Pyro mm -hmm. in Carson. Uh, you know, Pyro's is everywhere. It originated in Compton on Pyro Street on the west side. <clears throat> uh, you know, and from there it spread. You know, it's, it's you know, uh Popkins, they going they going to call it on the Paru side. Uh there's no just blood gangs. You know what I mean, Paru's part of the the blood tree, but the whole city of uh, uh Compton when it comes to a a red or burgundy bandana is just Paru. And then outside of that every city watch, you know, you got Circle City Paru, Hawthorne, Hawthorne Paru, you know, uh Pomona, 056, Pacoima, PPB. I mean, it, it, you know, Inglewood, um Sacramento, Bakersfield, San Diego, Skyline Paru, uh, Lincoln Parks back in the day used to be Lincoln Park Paru, Little Africa, uh, you know. So Paru's is everywhere. It, it ain't too many places you're going to go where it's not a Paru set. But, um, yeah, he, he, he kept it from us, and I understand why he kept it from us because even myself, it's hard for me to look at them little dudes like that. Is that because you're a father yourself or because – we watched them grow up. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying they're not men, but we know they don't come from that element. And, and sitting back, because I've been behind those walls, right, I can understand Diddy's mental right now of what he went through in the 90s. And to be in a federal institution and to know the children you raised that he didn't, didn't come up like him to have that thicker skin that he may have and those type of people around him, you know, like Zip, Von Zip, and people like that to help him deal with things, to know that his children are out here, because I don't think they understand. I think they see Ray J as just the entertainer R&B guy in the suit. A lot of people understand Ray J is a real par root, and we love him like that. You know, he's been around us a long, long time. You know, he, he didn't did the things he needed to do for us to respect him like that. So when we hear eight dudes try to surround him, we're going to take that personal. And at that point in time, even if Diddy's hearing that they did that, he understands what comes with that. So it was real hard for me to really just, like, turn that flame up because I understand what I'm dealing with. I understand that psyche that like, yo, Ray, you've been saying things about my dad or whatever. The whole world has their opinion about their dad. You understand what I'm saying? So it's like you playing tough guy games and it gets to a point to where either you're going to check it, right, or it's going to get checked. And, 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 you know, Ray's telling me 
He ain't answered my call in a couple of days because he know I just found out. And he know what I'm on. He know my psyche. And um, and I know he's probably been corresponding with him. Um, but we're not going to allow you to hurt our little homie. That ain't going to happen. Did you speak to Diddy's sons and tell them that I spoke to you, his don't, manager. you don't want this problem? No, we, I, I spoke to their manager. And the manager was very respectful. Uh, Stevie J called me yesterday. And I didn't like the tone of his voice. So, you know, I told him, when you come to Cali, just, you know, holler at me. I, I'm not going to talk to you on the phone because you just Stevie J. You ain't nobody like that. You Stevie J. You know, you, we been cool and all that, but you're not going to call me as if you, you your voice, uh, you got some type of authority in, in, in what's going on. You're just Stevie J. That's all you are. We watch you. You're a funny dude. You made a, some beats or whatever, and, and cool. You know, me and you always been all right, but Stevie, what you're going to do is ruin our relationship based upon something they did that's wrong. But his whole disposition is they like my nephews. I'm like, cool. He like, you supposed to be the OG. Yeah, and I'm going to be an OG to this part of the road. That, that's what I'm going to be. And we ain't going to allow nobody to hurt him because I tell Ray, what if they would have did something? You know, he was he left the homies at home for whatever reason. Maybe, maybe you know, he knew something would have happened because if Donut and the, the regular homies would have been with him, then we'd be reading about Diddy and them sons. And this is what they need to understand. Like, yo, bro, you not from out here. Y'all live a different life. Y'all like to go to these clubs and play with these girls and, and the Beverly Centers and all that. And we everywhere. <clears throat> you know, we all of us ain't dressed in gang attire. You know, and when we know you're a threat to one of ours, then you become food. So, you know, hopefully, you know, <clears throat> they can work it out. Hopefully we come to an understanding. My whole, my whole disposition is you ain't going to be a threat to the homie and then be in our backyard like it's cool. That's it. You know, hopefully they come to their senses. They don't need this in their life. Really, they don't. They don't need the, the top of exposing we can start doing on the secrets we know, the things. Ray J been protecting that family, brother. A lot of things we know. A lot of people then came forward. A lot of little secrets going on. On top of that, they got other issues. You know, one of the sons got charges and allegations of charges coming. So they really need to focus on what's positive and continuing, trying to continue their father's business and giving him some peace of mind while he deal with something. That man, 55 years old, or be 55 in November, he in the fight of his life. He don't need to be in there thinking about my kids who I didn't did all this work for, is throwing it all away and trying to run into the, to the streets. It just don't make sense. Yeah. <clears throat> now, do you think um, you think Diddy's gonna be uh, offered a deal because? I mean, I'm sure you were. Jay-Z, prior to all of this, was um, all over social media, all over the news. And since Diddy has been arrested, haven't heard a peep out of Jay-Z. Do you think it has anything to do with Diddy or Diddy possibly um, mentioning Jay-Z's name or uh, to get a better plea um, deal? What do you think is going on between that relationship? <clears throat> we all got friends, right, that... We're friends with them for certain reasons. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and we all got friends that we know what we know, and the things we don't know, we don't know. You know? I think that Jay-Z and Diddy definitely had a relationship. We know that. They're both New Yorkers. They're both in the music industry. They're both moguls. Um, I think they have definitely crossed business and, and sharing ideas and probably partnering and, and, and sharing resources um, I definitely know that uh, Jay-Z, along with his wife, along with uh, women prior to his wife, have attended Diddy parties. Like, a lot of people have attended Diddy parties. Just because you went to a Diddy party don't mean that you participated in the freak-off. You know what I'm saying? You got right. the backyard aspect of Diddy party, which is like a 12 to 1, 30, 12 to 2 o'clock thing. Then you got, you know, the party moves inside, and it's over about 3, 4 o'clock. And then after that, it's the people that spend the night and the people that spend the weekend. What goes on then, nobody knows but those people. But um, I believe Jay-Z, you know, is being advised what to do, what not to do. Do I think that we'll see some footage of Jay-Z participating in some illegal activities? No, nah, I don't believe so. But I do believe that he's kind of like staying out the media because – all the press and all the assumptions and accusations 
is bad, are bad, and he's worked so hard to transition from one light to another. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think that we'll see any Jay Z indictments personally. I guess time will tell. Um, but we do have a clip here of Jamie Foxx recently saying Diddy was responsible for his for his medical problems back in 2023. What's your opinion on that? Let's go ahead and clip, uh, play this clip, Joe, and then... Um... ...hearing from Oscar and Grammy winner Jamie Foxx after his mysterious health scare, saying he has been to hell and back. Foxx said on social media that he's recovering from the medical condition that sent him to the hospital in April. He didn't disclose the illness. The last thing the internet has heard about Jamie Foxx was that he had a medical emergency that was about to cost his life. Many believed that we were about to say goodbye to the actor in 2024 because sources said that his condition was critical. What's even more interesting is the fact that this happened soon after he started spilling details about Sean Diddy Combs and his problematic behavior. His family tried their best to hide the details of what happened to Jamie, but the internet, along with some other celebrities, knew the story behind it. What happened and how did this massive setback unfold in the entertainment industry. Let's get right into it. Now, the one comedian that had everyone well informed about everything that was going on in Hollywood was none other than Cat Williams. Money, he did something we, we never heard of. We ain't even say. Jamie Foxx said he got a mystery illness. He claimed that what happened to Jamie wasn't particularly a healthy scare or a naturally occurring medical emergency. It was premeditated and orchestrated by the most powerful man in the music industry. Matter of fact, Diddy is probably the kingpin of Hollywood too, even though he isn't an actor. But the question that many people ask is why Jamie chose now to start sharing these details. Why didn't he do so decades ago? And more importantly, is this just a small step to the bigger plot to bring down the rap mogul for good? As of 2024, each and every single detail about this man's life is slowly being revealed, and each news is as shocking as the last. Diddy's entire empire that has been built since the 90s with blood, sweat, and tears is crumbling apart, and people believe Jamie had a role in the downfall. See, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> See, the, the, the BS propaganda never moves me because... Um, First of all, have Jamie released his medical records to let us know what his issue was? And if so, right, how does that tie into Diddy? And if so, are you saying that this was something that you didn't do, right? Meaning, let's say it was some, the most common thing for these people to say about this is some drugs involved. Right? So let's say, what is he saying? He got some drugs from uh, Diddy, and these drugs caused whatever to happen, mm -hmm. right? Maybe oh, the drink was laced or you know, the, whatever. The yeah, drugs that's what I'm laced, saying. Yeah. Now, from my understanding, I believe he was overseas filming when something happened because Nick Cannon had to go in and fill in for him. I believe it might have been in Ireland or something like that, right? So, you know. Are you saying something happened prior to and it caught it with you? You was there? Was Diddy over there? It's nothing about that clip that really gives us anything to have a discussion that Diddy was involved in, in anything. They show a bunch of clips of Diddy over the last 10, 15, 20 years, him giving speeches. Those are positive clips. When they gave us, showed those clips, those was positive clips. So now they flashing this thing, but they're saying these things. They're talking loud. They're not saying nothing. What, what, what are they saying? What is, what is Jamie saying? Is Jamie saying, yo, when I pulled up on your spot, this? Or are they saying that when they check, check my blood, that this was found in my blood and it could have been administered through liquor or through a drink or through a drug? Or was it pink cocaine that I got from me? What is he saying? He hasn't said anything for us to even have this conversation to really put this on Diddy, right? Um, and me knowing Jamie, if it was that type of situation, I don't think he's going to be that vocal about that like that. I mean, the funny part about it is Jamie had free coughs too. At the, at his own free coughs? Or he got the, parties the, too. Uh, mm. The two biggest party givers is Diddy and Jamie Foxx. 
Now, I don't know if it's to the magnitude of what they saying Diddy's doing and, you know, bringing people in or whatever, but he, he got extravagant parties too. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, I still haven't heard Jamie say anything that kind of insinuate that Diddy laced his drink, gave him a bad batch of drugs, and even if, it, let's just say it was a bad batch of drugs, who's to say that Diddy knew the drugs was bad? I mean, we got fat dog running around here like crazy. People that's using drugs are playing Russian roulette with their life, brother. You know what I mean? You know, you could use the right amount of whatever your thing is to get you your regular high. But if that right amount has an amount of fentanyl in it, it's going to kill you. You know what I mean? Like having five lines of powder and one of these lines is laced. You know what I mean? So, Jamie, just hypothetically speaking, if you went by there to pick up something for your own personal use, is he going to accept accountability for his actions? Because it was you that went by there to pick it up. I don't think Puff snatched Jamie up, pulled his arm out, and gave him a hot shot. I don't think that happened, but that clip really doesn't, it doesn't tell us anything. What does it say? What does it say that Jamie's insinuating? Now, what if there are some videos of Jamie, there's something on Jamie, and that's the reason why he's being indirect and not verbatim coming out and saying, look, this is what happened. Because it seems like everybody's quiet. You mentioned Jamie also has freak offs, and we're, we're, we all know apparently Diddy had freak offs. Who else has these freak off parties? Bro, before the brothers was having the freak off parties, Hugh Hefner was having them. So I don't understand what the problem is. See, it's just a federal law that was constructed back in 1910, the White Slavery Man Act, right? And the government uses it as they see fit, right? I don't think nothing's wrong with the freak off, okay? I don't think nothing's wrong with. Cigar smokers going to a cigar lounge. Now, I wouldn't personally go to one unless I just had an important meeting and this is where the guy want to meet. You know why? I don't smoke cigars. But if I'm a cigar smoker, I'm going to go to the cigar lounge. And I'm going to hope they got every type of cigar, even the ones they ain't supposed to have. Right? This is real. So when you go into these parties and you got some people Let's say, yo, I'm going to the party. Uh, I'm trying to run into this exec from this label. Boom, boom, boom. We say he's going to be there early. Then you got some people that saying, yo, I hope I run into this chick. She was hot. She was at the wars tonight. She said she's going to be there. Then you got some people that's like, yo, we're going to the party. We're going to do our thing. The drugs are great. The liquor is free. The food is, is, is crazy. And after the fact, we're going to go to the back because I'm in the BDSM or I'm into this, I'm into that, and we're going to do our thing. As long as these are grown-ups and grown people, I personally don't think anything is wrong with it, but when it comes down to the distribution of drugs anywhere, right, that's when the law starts to kick in, and then when the people use the drugs start saying, oh, I didn't know what I was doing, then that's where this federal thing starts to kick in, and then when you fly people in because they are what you call call girls or sex workers, this when that law starts to kick in, right? When you think that you're throwing a party, it's rules to how you can throw a party, but we just don't think about that. Uh, but I don't think majority of people's concerns are the parties or the freak-offs. The concern is as far as there were allegedly children involved, as far as ch children being sexually abused. We just start hearing that, that bro. That, that's a whole different ballgame. If, if you have a freak-off party, I mean, if there's grown-ups there, they want to drink, they want to do drugs, bro, that, that's up to you. I mean, you know, it's your discretion. That's it. But when there's young kids involved or kind of the stories we've been hearing of, well, you know, if my son or daughter wanted to move up the rankings in the music industry or in the film industry, they had to do certain things, then I think people have a problem with that. Well, see, I haven't heard that. What I've heard was they would take them with them to clubs. Okay, I guess I'm guilty. I used to take my 14, 15-year-old son with us to clubs intentionally on purpose. And the club gonna let them in because where I want to host in the club. You know why I took my son to the club? We sit in the club and I tell the guy, yo, come here, what you got? Oh, I got a little powder. Show him that. See that? It's powder cocaine. What you got? Got some E. Show him that. See that, son? That's XC. What you got? Molly. See that? That's Molly. See that? Mm -hmm. See that, right? Yeah. 
And we'll sit in the club all night. And about 2 o'clock when it's time to head home, I get in the car. I say, son, you think everybody in the club respect your dad? Yeah, dad, everybody came, talked to you, shook your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, uh, you remember what the, the molly and the cocaine and the ecstasy looked like? Yeah, I remember. I said, you don't forget what those things look like. I said, did you see your dad do any of these things? No. Did you even see me take a, a shot of liquor? No. But everybody respects your dad, right? Yeah. You don't have to do those things to be cool, right? So that's why I took my son, right? So when it came to Usher, I heard Usher say that um, he saw some things that was, you know, uh, they took him to clubs and stuff like that. I've never heard any of these artists say they were touched. I haven't seen an active criminal charge brought against Diddy for child molestation. I've seen a bunch of civil, nothing criminal. I haven't seen a criminal charge for well, that. Well, there were, there's been 120 accusations so far. Civil. Right? Now, and 25 of those are underaged, the youngest being a nine-year-old. Civil or criminal? Um, that I'm not sure of. Civil. I'm very sure of it. We ran it on the hundred side of the trenches. Yeah. It's civil cases, right? Now, I've also seen this 16-year-old lady, right? Mm -hmm. Remember? She said they got her intoxicated, and Diddy and the other single guy took advantage of her in the bathroom, right? In New York, right? Mm -hmm. Legal age of consent in New York is 17, so that would make her a minor, right? But you know what else we saw? We saw her get caught. Her boyfriend turned her in when she texted him and said, I'll give you $3 million if you collaborate this story. Right? Right. So I'm not going to say 100% of those 120 people are lying. Right? I'm not going to say that. But I'm not going to say 100% of them are telling the truth as well. Of course not. So, Where there, but, the, but, but you have to agree, where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And um, there's, yeah, but, there's no accusations against mm -hmm. you, as far as I know. There's no accusations mm -hmm. against me, because there's no smoke, there's no fire. Okay, so but there has to be a reason why there's so many of, so many people coming out. You've got, um, for, speaking of Usher, for instance, right? Wait, wait, hold on. Yeah. Before you go, you said where there's smoke, there's fire, right? Mm -hmm. You're familiar with the law, right? You ever heard of a charge called arson? Yes. You know. A person charged with arson is a person starting the fire, right? So who's to say just because it's smoke, Diddy started that fire? How you know that person is not like that young lady that just got caught lying? And how do you know some of these people ain't starting their own fires? Time will tell whether... Yeah. yeah but I'm, what bothers yeah. me is, where's the criminal side of this? Everybody's going for the bag. Everybody's, everybody's playing for... He'll settle out. You get what I'm saying? Like where, and even law enforcement, they're going to look into it and say, well, we're going to bring charge. They look into it like, well, nothing we can do on the criminal side. There ain't nothing there. But yet on the civil side, okay, let's bring this and let's see if we can get him to settle out. That's the problem with these civil claims. And you know it like I know it, that a lot of people talk to the attorneys. What does he want? They want a half a million, he'd probably settle out for 200000 What am I looking at? Well, if we drag it out a couple of years, your, your bill with me going to be a million dollars, and if you lose, then you know the half a million. So it makes sense to just pay him for 200000 and keep moving. That's how civil works. Just because a person pays out in civil doesn't necessarily mean he's paying out because he's guilty. A lot of people are making a business decision and saying, okay, either way it go, I'm going to pay. Even if I win, it'll cost me a million dollars with you. Or you telling me I can get this dude 200000 and be done with it. And, and that's what happens. But, you know, you're right. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't uh, support uh, pedophiles. But at the end of the day, I'm looking, I'm seeing it for what I'm seeing it for. Diddy been giving parties for a long time. He's arrogant. He's cocky. He pisses people off. He does everything that a person has to do to piss somebody off to expose him. And through all these years, I've never heard anybody accuse him of doing something inappropriate with a kid. How about Justin Bieber? Didn't he talk about having been abused by Diddy? Abused in what way? Was he yelled at, screamed at? 
Was it in the booth? Because people like Diddy, people like Dre, they don't play with you in that booth. You know, that's just like, you know, being on the Pop Warner football team. Rest in peace, Mr. Joe Baguera, my football coach. He could care less what he put us through. Just when we thought he ran us to death, he'll run us some more. You know why? We later on figured out he was creating a fourth quarter football team. So we might be down by two, three touchdowns, but we get to that fourth quarter, we still got fresh legs. So abused how? You know, not taking nothing from, from Bieber. You know, Bieber's a little white kid. You know what I mean? You know, maybe maybe he wasn't used, you know, to uh, the authoritative approach that he took. But once again, do we got a clip of Justin saying that did he touch me inappropriate? Did he did this or did he did that? I mean, where is it at? Abuse comes in many forms. Was it verbal? Was it physical? Was it sexual? What kind of abuse was it? I, we'll find out in due time. But um, my... Earlier comment about Usher, because he, the, the way I look at things is, for example, Usher was on The View a couple of weeks ago. They asked him about, you know, the presidential nominations and all that. And Joy Behar was trying to push him to speak against Trump. And he wouldn't. He said, look, I don't get involved in politics. People can choose to vote for whoever they want. But then yesterday, he's speaking at the podium at some rally where he says, to, to, to all the attendees there, I love all of you, but I love Kamala Harris more. So that makes me think, do they have something on Usher where all of a sudden they're like, listen, we've got these videos of you, inappropriate from the freak-off parties or whatnot. Again, this is just me, I guess, you can being a conspiracy theorist, you can say. Um, and all of a sudden he's changed his tune and supporting who they want him to support. Because all these celebrities, Leonardo DiCaprio, these guys com coming out out of nowhere and just endorsing the hell out of Kamala Harris, maybe they're, they've got some clips on these people. And that's because Hollywood is known for that. I mean, you know, we can look back at uh, Epstein, right? Epstein was basically had dark information about everybody from politicians to billionaires to celebrities. That's how he was protected. And that's how they held all of these people accountable and to dance to their tune. So you don't think that has anything to do with uh, the information or the video clips that Diddy may have on these celebrities or um, whether it's the ushers or the uh, Jennifer Lopez's of the world. And wh what do you think of that? <clears throat> in, a word, in the words of some of one of my sisters on my floor, Devious, Maybe Kamala Harris is just doing a great job. Maybe her speeches are swaying people to believe in her. Because what you're saying is the federal government is backing Kamala Harris and going to these people saying, we need you to do this or else, which to me takes away from the hard work, um, the thoughtfulness that this 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 woman um, has put forth to do what she has to do to you know gain her vote. So Mamie Kamala is just doing a good job. How about that? I mean, it's like <clears throat> whatever these people have on tape, I don't believe it's child driven driven. I think maybe there's some things on there that might be embarrassing, you know. Maybe some of the some of our male figures that's in the closet is in there doing things with with other men. You know what I mean? Um, maybe some of our male figures are doing things, and maybe they're married. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe our female figures are doing things with other men, and maybe they're married and they're significant other. Maybe it's things that's happening, and they don't want their children to see if it's exposed. You know, it's all kind of uh, different ways of looking at it. Um, but, no, nah, I, I don't, I don't, I think people are swaying towards, you know, Trump's been, uh, he's been making some remarks and saying some things that people are not really agreeing with, you know, putting tariffs on things coming from China. And you had the um, the VP guy, I believe that was, whoever's running with a VP, you know, make that remark about uh, 
Puerto Rico, saying it's a floating island of trash. You know what I'm saying? That's U.S. territory. You know, uh, Latinos, as my boy Stevie Dunez would say, is you know, it's Afro-Latinos over there. You know what I mean? So it's like he's saying things that where he might have would have had a vote. People are swaying another way. It's like if you're not going to go his way and he says something that irritates you or piss you off, you go the other way. Um, so, you know, it could be what you're saying, but I, you know, I, I'd rather just say that, you know, Kamala is just doing a great job at swaying people uh, into seeing things her way. Um, I'm a Trump supporter, personally, because I believe he's a renegade. Um, I still would like to see him office based upon the state our country is in. I believe he has the, the reach. I believe he has the resources and relationships to sway things in a different way that are already been, been established that has nothing to do right with politics um but you know once again you know a lot of things that these presidential people these people say is just promises you know like i know it's, it's a small percentage of things that's going to really happen while they're in office you know what i mean they may set up things but you know i just think she's doing a great job of swaying people man i think trump need to tighten up you know, get back focus and just focus on what he's doing and stay away from antagonizing people. Even if he can, if it's not politically it's not politically correct right now. Well, let's move on to uh, as you know, Reggie Wright Jr. and Mob James were on our podcast mm -hmm. or on the chair, I should say, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, we want to show you a clip here where uh, we brought up Tupac getting assaulted in prison. Reggie got really upset about that. Why? He knows about it. Do you still believe the alle these allegations are true? Definitely. Let's go ahead and play this cl clip. He got sexually assaulted in prison. He know we got it. You know, he knows we have all this shit. So, you know, I give him a chance to let him make it. You know, uh, ever since I hit him with that, he been kind of quiet. You know, I got all kind of things. I just, I hold them until you give me reason to use them. We are the exposers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, listen, man, you got to own your truth. You know, everybody that's sexually assaulted in prison doesn't make you gay. Uh, I'm just going to say you ain't a gangster if you didn't revenge it. You understand what I'm saying? You know, it don't make you gay. I've seen people get, you know, taking advantage of and come out that cell, go get a dumbbell, get a knife, and come back and do something to somebody. And I respect that man. You know, you got, you're 120 pounds, you got a dude in there, 250, 260, bench pressing 500 pounds in a 12 by eight. It ain't too much you can do once he overpowers you, but if you don't do nothing about it, then we're gonna look at you like a coward. That's just what that is. So you, you, know I mean? you still stand behind yeah, what I'm, you I'm confused why Reggie got upset about that. I would assume it's because he doesn't think those allegations are true. Reggie did not say that. No way. Reggie did not say he don't think those allegations are true. There's no way Reggie said that. He did when he was on our podcast. Well, you, you did hear that um, Vlad said he heard the recording. Vlad said what? Vlad said he heard the recording. If you do your research, he said, I heard the same recording that you made mention of. And Reggie heard the same recording. Ask him, it sh actually, it's Suge on the recording. Call Reggie and ask Reggie, say, hey, Wax said, what's up with the recording? Well, Suge is kind of verifying that what happened in Pac in prison was true. We Reggie, come on, Reggie. We, we know the truth. <laughs> we should bring Reggie back and ask him this question. Yeah, you got to ask him that. You should just call him, right? Call him, ask him the question, and drop it in. Blindside him. He can handle it. That's my brother. He'd be all right. We'll do that. <laughs> How do you feel when an NBA star like LeBron publicly congratulates Big Meech for, uh, for his release? Do you think that's sending the wrong message to kids, glorifying um, his actions? or? Um, one of my exposers, my comrade, Luce Cannon, he spoke on that. And I seen um, the direction he was taking. Um, in, in LeBron's defense, I understand where Luce was going with it. Um, because we know Big Meech as being a drug dealer and so on and so forth. And, you know, a lot of us have become kids and family, man, and we understand that 
you know, even though it was it was glorified back then, it kind of destroyed communities. But in LeBron's defense, I believe at the time Meech went to jail, LeBron might have been in the lead a year or two. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, when you young in the lead and you you coming through Miami, you coming to Atlanta, you know, and, and you're the young new thing, cats like Meech going to reach out to you, man, come party, was whatever. He don't know no better. He just going to a party. But on the flip side of it, um, I believe LeBron's uh, children, uh, what they know about Big Meech is legal business. They know about the show that 50 Cent produced. They know that that's Big Meech's real son playing him. Um, they know that Meech is now out of prison. And believe it or not, whether you want to respect it or not, he left a drug dealer and then he's come back a businessman on the legal side of things. You got to think about it. Uh, 50 Cent just ran the, everything up to when he got captured. He just did 19 years. There's a whole nother series that'll probably come of what he went through in, in prison. And then you have the BMF as a whole with what we've seen and with the prison aspect of it, of he done doing a series part of it, um, that could be a movie. You know what I mean? A motion picture. So I think LeBron is, is welcoming Meech home on those grounds. I, I think the children of today know Big Meech's story, but they understand what they're looking at is big business. They're watching them on television. They're watching the story on television. I believe he may have executive produced rights, if not his children or somebody tied to him. So I believe LeBron was saluting somebody that when he was young in the game probably showed him some respect. And I believe he's sal saluting somebody that he believes has crossed over right into being a legal businessman. Now, they say Big Meech has also cooperated with police. Do you think that's true? Yeah, well, it's a, in form of a third-party cooperation. You'll never find any paperwork with his name on it, cooperate. It's just documents of a lady that he deals with that controls the rights that I believe he still deals with that took the stand um, against an individual from St. Louis that we know is Cuffy, right? Real big dude, helped Meech kind of like cross over into really becoming that that guy he had became in that drug game. And um, Meech worked through this young lady to set this gentleman up. He spoke his piece. Uh, you could do your research on um, Cam Capone and Blue Da Vinci where Cuffy actually called in live and told his story. And, you know, stay tuned. Cuffy, he bought a year or two to the house. So he'll be here. He's going to talk about it. He's a real individual, very respected individual. So you're not going to find it on paperwork, but you'll see that the, the cooperant CI, you'll see her name. You'll see she's the one that owns um, the BMF rights, you know, through Meech. Um, she's been on the red carpets. And it'll make you wonder if, if Meech, you and Cuffy this tight, and this whole situation went down and she's in the middle of it, and the car allegedly came through you. Your man got all this time behind her, and she's taking his stand, right? Where do you stand with it? You know what I mean? Like, you know, so you're going to hit a third-party cooperative situation floating around, but you would never find a document, not that I know of, that has Big Meech's name on it, giving a statement against anybody. You also keep saying you have videos of the late Nipsey Hussle and a uh, threesome with another man. Why haven't you exposed that? Well, they're not my videos. You know, I've just been, my disposition was not to expose them. Make sure they wasn't exposed. Big U wanted me to expose them, and I wouldn't expose them. Another reason why we fell out. He wanted me to expose them. He wanted me to go out to the, their family estate uh, contractually, which is all that's on my phone. Um, he wanted me to do a whole bunch of things that I wouldn't do. So my whole disposition just was was to make sure these things didn't come out. Um, what I did expose was I exposed a young lady that was in the videos, right? Um, you've never heard her come out and say that what I was saying was a lie. Um, the gentleman that's in the videos who had the consent from the late Nipsey Hussle to take the videos, in the videos, I've seen them, seen them all, seen them all, read all the text messages. So, you know, you can't come tell them you have something and we don't see the work. We got to see the content. You know what I'm saying? So, um, 
It is what it is. He's out here right now. You know, I challenge people all the time. I'm like, yo, bro, you, you think it's a game? You want to put some money up? I'll call him. He'll pull up, turn on his phone, and there it goes. Just had a bag on the table. So my whole disposition was to keep it from coming out, not expose it. I'm not the one that exposed it was out. It was actually Hassan Campbell recorded a private conversation with me and him. He released it. I never came out and told the world, but once he released it, and they asked him, whack, is that your voice? Whatever I say once, I got to say twice. Yeah, that's definitely me. So when they start asking questions about it, you know, I'm in the hot seat. It is what it is. So did you consider him as being bisexual or gay? Um... I wouldn't call him bisexual or gay. I would just say he was on his freak off shit. I wouldn't, from what I seen, I wouldn't call him bisexual or gay. Uh, me personally, I'm not in the sword fights. You know what I'm saying? I'm the only sword in the row. Personally, right? But to each his own. A lot, it's more people that's saying, yo, it's a threesome, two dudes and a female, it's cool that they cool with that, they're not. So I personally wouldn't say it was bisexual or gay. I would say it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't have approved of what I saw. But then again, man, you know, it's different strokes for different folks. You know what I'm saying? I probably do things to my women that people don't do to their women. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, end of the day, but what I did see, um, I would just say it was a it was a little freaky dicky. I wouldn't call him bisexual or gay though. I, I wouldn't. Um I didn't see I will I will verify that and clarify that. There's no man to man contact. You know what I mean? It's just things that went on in between that people would scratch their head about. But no, nah, it, it, it's no like Nipsey over here doing this with a man and contact. Nah, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Never said nothing like that. Um, but you know, it's like to different strokes of different folks. You know what I mean? Some people, some people's into different things, man. You know, drugs start to play a role, alcohol start playing a role, and people just start rolling. You know, and they just start doing things. You know what I mean? You know, to each his own. You got some proofs. You know, I got. I know some women don't even like to kiss their man. What? You know what I'm saying? So, and then you got Adam 22 who doesn't mind other men being with his That's woman, what I'm right? saying. Like, that's what I mean. It's different, you know, it's different levels of things that people like to do. You know what I mean? People will call Adam gay. You know, he lets transgender sit on his lap. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, uh, he does all kind of things. I just think Adam's the normal everyday white guy. They don't care. What do you think of him being okay with his wife? Being with other men, um, from what what my brother tells me that she was um, um, bisexual or maybe a lesbian in her earlier years. What I think about it is that they both, as a couple, as a married couple, both as parents, um, agree and an understanding that this is what they're doing, and they've taken what they're doing and turned it into a legal, respectable business. Right, uh, which contributes to the well-being of their of their daughter. Um, so, at that point, uh, if it works for them, who, who who am I to, you know, speak against it? You know what I mean? So it's a real business. His wife is very respectable, very sweet lady, cool as hell, you know. And I haven't seen them have any problems in any situations to where. Their understanding um, has been stepped on. So, you know, hey, if it works for them, it's cool with me. Now, as a father, um, you mentioned earlier where you've, you've shown your son as far as the different types of drugs that you've been around. Uh -huh. You don't use it because that doesn't earn you respect. You don't drink because that's not what necessarily earns you respect. Um, seeing what's going on with society today with with the DD allegations and all these allegations and all these celebrity issues and breakups and, you know, divorces and just society seems to be in a turmoil right now. Um, how are you as a father raising your kids to, to stay away from that and, and, and be, 
and still have the morals and values and the principles that you expect them to to have when they grow up to be do you have boys or girls one boy one girl when they grow up to be man and woman you know in their as adults how how are you raising them so that they have their proper values and morals uh once they're adults well first of all i tell them be better than me second of all my children are raised i got my son's 30 my daughter's 20 um third of all i don't i don't raise them to be uh, removed from society because at that point in time right you really don't know who who they are that you you got to let them enter the race you know, you all you could do is give them the guidance, uh, give them the proper messages, and then you have to factor in that they're going to be who they are. You know, they're 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 um, they come from you, they come from their mother, right? But then it's there is them, it's who they are, how they see things. You know, um, and all you could do, man, is, is just hope that it turns out right for them. You know, um, I've been I've been blessed. I, I haven't. There's no drug problems with my children. Uh, I think my son's every now and then. My son has an occasional drink. You know what I mean? Every now and then. I haven't had to deal with any DUIs or nothing crazy, bar fights. Uh, he's pretty good about getting away from people that he sees that, you know, may cause that type of problem because he know he doesn't want to pull his dad into something that may send me back to the penitentiary. But um, what's going on in the world has been going on in the world. The only new thing is social media and the new spotlight on what's going on in the world, right? And that's going on everywhere, you know, between iPhones, the ring, uh, cameras on top of the telephone poles and stoplights. You got these new, you, you got the police there, not even there. They got the police uh, light, uh, you know, sitting in the Walmart parking lot recording everything, right? So what's really, what we got going on now is just, it's being exposed, Social media is an outlet. Before things came out, you had to read it in the paper, you heard it on the news or whatever. Right now, if me and your editor had a fight right now and he dropped me and your guy over here took a picture of me dropped or had a video of that, within seven seconds it's up. Within 19 seconds, every blog has picked it up. Within 30 seconds, at least 50 million people has laid eyes on it. That's what's new in the world. Society has always been what it's been. It just wasn't exposed. It's, it's magnified now. Yeah. Crazy. One final thing. Rapid fire answers. I'm going to give you a couple of names or a few names. Go. I want you to uh, say the first thing that comes to mind. Big Mitch. Successful. Brick Baby. Buster. Big U. Confused. Adam 22. Um, jeez. Um, he a brother to me. Uh, I'm looking for a word because helpful. He's helped a lot of my people. Mob James. Rat. Suge Knight. Um, Suge Knight. A book to read about. He's you can't you can't pin him down to one thing. You can't pin him down. It's not uh, not being successful. You can't pin him down as being the most successful. Um, he's a book to read about. He's a he's a learning tool. He's a learning tool. I'm curious, why did you refer to Mob James as rat? He's a rat. What do you mean we ran the paperwork on him? We got to work on him. Yeah, you, you told on the homie FG. He's a rat. He told. His work on him. Reggie know that. Ask him that when you call him. He's a rat. Like, this is what it is. Documented. And I'm going to speak on that one. We ain't going to talk about what his brother talking about. He took the stand on him and said some things. And there's other things going on in other places, you know, with motorcycle groups. But that documentation, that's documented. You know, maybe y'all need to have a conversation with, with, with FG. That's a G, homie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's a rat. He told on him. Send him to the federal penitentiary. So why is it still an OG, though? OG to who? He's not an OG to do your pyru? No, we don't see him as that. He's a rat. 
uh, is the original member from the gang you from? Yeah, we give him that. But you can't hold the same status as a homie over there that did it right and walked a straight line. We don't, he, I don't even, he tells you he's not a paru anymore. You know what I'm saying? He's a rat, he told, like, you know what I'm saying? That's just what it is. You know, it, 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 it's no different. You know, the truth can never be considered disrespect. That's the, that's the slogan I created, the slogan I pushed, and I see it's picking up. You know what I mean? You know, that's why we have the exposures going on. You know, me, Loose Cannon 600, you know, uh, my man Ghost Man, you know, my queen R&B. We putting together this thing, my man Prince. You know, we doing research. We got research teams, lavish, you know, flockos on board. You know, we got a lot of women in federal penitentiary. We got a lot of cats in these smaller cities, smaller states that's locked up that don't have a voice. You know, we setting up the website. Uh, we taking it to Dodge Network. And, you know, if you got the paperwork, you send it to us, the exposers, we're going to read it. If we read it and it say your name, that's just what it is. You was a rat. You know, we're going to research it, and, and that's what it is, especially a lot of our ladies in the federal penitentiary who got told on by cats, but they just don't have no voice. You know what I mean? They, they, they drowned out. So, you know, but Mob James, he's a rat. He told on FG, a real par row. Would you be open to sit down with him? Yeah, but he ain't going to sit down with me. I sit down with him. All day long. You you didn't he didn't you didn't ask him about it. Reggie didn't tell you about this. You know I, I exposed it first on Reggie's uh, network maybe like four or five years ago. It went up hundred thousand views quick. Mm -hmm. And then Bob James called Reggie crying, talking about why you doing me like this, this type of exposure, this this that. And through that Reggie pulled it down. And through that is how they started doing business. Reggie got him a job. Felt sorry for him. But you got to remember Reggie is the he knows the streets because he come from the streets. He grew up in the hood. But, you know, he went the law enforcement way, but he still was around street dudes. So Reggie's mind and heart is a little different from us. You know what I mean? Especially if he knows the dude. You know, I didn't hold it against him. I was a little pissed off about him. Like, yo, bro, how you call me and ask me some questions? Then I say what I say. He said, but whack, I didn't know you was going to go there. But Reggie, you know me. I'm not going to hold no punches. So, you know, um, Mob James know he told. You know, I, I get the link to the paperwork. I send it in to y'all, but you, that's what it is. Like, don't get mad at me about your actions. You told, you told. Anything you want to plug in before we? Uh, uh, end the uh show? incredible diapers. Um, at uh, incredible diapers up. Go shop incredible diapers on Amazon. Um, incredible diapers coming to a Walmart soon. With my brother Nick Cannon. Uh, me and Floyd Mayweather. We probably about another week outside of closing our deal. He's coming in as a partner. Um, I'd like to thank my team over there in Congo, my team over there in Nigeria, uh, my brother um, uh, Zachariah um, out of Philly for putting together the whole thing. I'd like to thank R&B, uh, my queen of the hundred side, the whole hundred side of the trenches over there. Um, you know, uh, Dosh Network, No Jumper. You know, uh, we putting some things together, and my my comrades, Loose Cannon is six hundred. We gonna keep moving. I like to thank y'all. Y'all got a nice setup here. Uh, if you guys get a call from these guys, y'all may want to pull up, man. It's nice, it's cool, it's humble. Uh, it's an easy environment. Um, the equipment is sound and crisp, it's clear. So, you know, uh, you know, I hope to come back. We we'll definitely would love to have you back. Thanks for joining us on the Wise Nuts, the chair. Got you. Man, I'm glad they did away with the death penalty in California because I wouldn't have said it. I thought y'all was trying to jinx me. 